Good day, good people, and thank you for joining me for another video here on the SVG YouTube channel. I am Phaedra Dion, owner and lead educator here at SVG Toots. So there are new updates to Cricut Design Space in version 7.23. And in this video, we are going to talk about those updates. We are going to look at my stuff, collections, fonts, and add to Canvas. This should be exciting. So let's get started. So I'm in Cricut Design Space here, and as you can see, I'm in the beta of version 7.23.159. And I previously did a what's new video for version 7.21. And you might be wondering why didn't I do one for version 7.22. The editable images were actually a part of the 7.21 beta release. And then they just bumped it up and made it a part of the stable uh, version of the 7.22 release. So now we get to 7.23, which is also in beta. And if you're not using the beta version and you want to be using the beta version, if you go to the hamburger menu here and then go to settings then you can switch to application experience beta or live so live is going to be what's stable right now not what's experimental so if you haven't gotten the update and you're still on 7.22 or 7.21 it's because you're not using the beta version and a lot of people are using the beta version because they want the updates as quickly as possible. So let's go up here to the learning plan. This is neat. So this says, ready to learn SVG Toots? This series of short, fun tutorials will guide you as you build your crafting skills. Before you know it, you'll be making with confidence. So you can start with the basics. You can learn about materials and you can also see other ways to learn. Skip the lessons and start exploring. You can revisit your learning plan anytime from the main menu. Look for a learning plan. So I can go out of here and click on visit home and it'll take me back to the home screen. So if you're new to design space or even if you're old to design space and you kind of just skipped around and learn what you needed to know to make a project to get it out into the world you can go to learning plan now and you can start with the basics and work your way up and i thought that was pretty cool so in case you didn't notice before this used to say my projects now it says my stuff so let's click on my stuff and here's my projects they're still here but now you also see what's bookmarked and you can see everything. So everything would be all of my projects and everything that's bookmarked. But then there's also images. So you can see what you bookmarked. You can see what you've uploaded and you can see what you purchased. And then we have all. So that would be all the bookmarked, all the uploaded, all the purchased. That's what you would see here. And notice under my stuff, we also have collections. So right now I have two collections. And this is something that I made that is a project. And I put it in the stickers collection because I was going to make this into a sticker. And tutorial files. So these are two tutorials that I have done in the past. My most recent tutorial was this hustle mode on and how to export from Cricut Design Space to a PDF to 
PhotoP, which is a free online image editor and make a cut file that you can use anywhere. And Great Vibes Tribe, that was another cut file I did a video on. So I will link both of these in the video description. So right now I'm seeing all of the assets that I have in the tutorials collection. And uh, these are my projects and these are my images. I don't have anything, any images in the tutorial files collection. With the free version of Cricut Design Space, you can only have up to five collections. But if you pay for Cricut Design Space, you can have a thousand collections. So I'm going to make another collection. And this collection will be my files. And there are several ways to get things into collections. So I am going to go out and do a search on butterflies. And it's going to show me images. It's going to show me Cricut projects. It's going to show me community projects. And it also shows me fonts, but there are no fonts that have to do with butterflies, but we'll come back and talk about this when we talk about fonts. So I can go to images, view all, and I'll click on free to see what butterflies are available to me without having Cricut access. Okay, so how about this one? I am going to click on the three little dots and I am going to choose to add to collection. And it's going to show me my collections. And I don't have a collection for Cricut files. I just have a collection for my files. So I'm going to come here to create new collection. Click on the plus symbol. And I'm going to put in Cricut files. And I'll create. And now that butterfly is in my Cricut file. So I'll go ahead, well, it's checked, and I'll click Add. And if I see another butterfly that I like, I'll add that too. So I'll click on Bookmark, and I've got it bookmarked, and I'm also going to add it to a collection. So I'll click Add to Collection, and put it in Cricut Files, and I'm done. So it says add it to Cricut files. I'm going to click on view here. So now in my collections, I have two files. So let me go up here to images and notice that I'm in my stuff and I see my bookmark images here. So what about uploaded? So I've uploaded these files here. I am going to upload a new file. I'm going to open a new project and then I'm going to go to upload. And I will upload an image and browse. And the image that I want is in my folder for this video. So I got these from a site called The Hungry JPEG. And right now they are free. So I will link this in the video description so you can grab this. As of the creation of this video, this bundle is free for the next day and 22 hours. And as you can see, it comes with a bunch of files. It comes with the complete license. So you can check that out to see what the complete license covers. And I am going to open one of these files in Cricut Design Space so I can add it to a collection. So kiss me after midnight. I'm going to open the PNG and I'm going to choose complex and it already has a transparent background. So I'll go to apply and continue and notice from here I can add this to a collection. So I'm going to add it to my files. I'll choose the print then cut image and I'll change the image name here. And I'll just put in 
a tag and upload so it's uploaded and it's in my collection so one thing that I did notice that if you upload the SVG version of the file, it doesn't allow you to put it in a collection. So I'm going to go back to upload image and browse and I will go to my folder on my personal storage and I'll go back to the new year SVG bundle and I'll pick something different and this time I'm going to upload the SVG and it brings it in as a cut image it doesn't allow you to select print and cut it just brings it in as a cut image and it doesn't allow you to put it in the collection so what I would need to do is I would need to go ahead and upload this and then once it's uploaded I can click on my three dots here and then I can add it to whichever collection I want to add it to. So just be mindful of that. If you bring in the PNG, then it allows you to add it to a collection when you're uploading. If you bring in an SVG, you have to upload it and then you can add it to a collection. So another way we can add to collections is by dragging and dropping. So I'm going to go over to images and I'm going to put in I did butterflies before let's do sports so we have 208 items that are free for sports again I can bookmark and add to collection or I can click on the three dots and add to collection or I can just go through and bookmark several things. And then once I have them bookmarked, I can go to my stuff and images. And from here, I can drag them to collections. So I can just click, hold, drag into collection. I can also select. So I'll click select and this will let me select up to 100 items to put into a collection. So I'll select the rest of the sport images. Then I'll choose next and add them to the collection. So that is another way to add things to collections. So let's go ahead and talk about add to canvas because we can actually do that from here. I am going to click on add to canvas. It's going to load it up. I'll click add to canvas for all of these and then I'll go to view. And when I go to my canvas, all of my images are here. I can also go to images and let's search for Christmas and the old way of adding to canvas still works so i can click oh let me do free and if i click on an image it'll load it up here at the bottom and then i can add it to the canvas we can also add to the canvas from the home screen so i'm going to go up to the hamburger menu at the top left i'm going to go to home and I am going to scroll down and look at featured images. And if I hover over an image, then I can add it to canvas this way. So I can click add to canvas. It'll load it up. I can click add to canvas, add to canvas, and then I can view. And all of these will be on my canvas. So all three ways I add it to canvas and they're all in the same project. So let's talk about five. I'm going to go to my hamburger menu and then I'm going to go to home and I am going to scroll down and I'm going to see fonts. This is new. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bookmark it and then I'm going to go ahead and add it to the canvas. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring in the text in that font. So BFC Winter Wishes. Now, if I go to fonts to change this font, I now get 
a pop over dialog box that I can move around so I don't have to worry about I'll get rid of all of this stuff I'm gonna get rid of my text too <laughs> but I'll just go in and put in text and then I'll click on the font and I'll get my pop over box and I can move this. We used to not be able to move this. We used to have to move the the text box itself out of the way before we could deal with the text if the font popover covered it up. And what's nice about this is we still have Cricut system and bookmarked, but we also have recent. And recent is actually very useful because it will not only show you the recent fonts for the current project, but it'll show you recent fonts in general. Okay, this is handy because a lot of times what I will do is I will try different fonts on the same text and I will have to write those fonts down so I can remember which ones I was most partial to when I was trying them out. But I don't have to do that anymore because now I can go to recent. It'll show me the one that is currently on the canvas, but it'll also show me the recent fonts that I have chosen. And we also got a lot of new filters. Remember how Kern used to be checked by default? It's not checked by default anymore. It is one of the filters in the drop down and shortcuts to filters here in the slider. And you can actually pick more than one filter. So classic delicate winter and I will do all caps and it'll show me this font. And then I can apply that. This is not a free font. But I can use my filter and I can say that I wanted to choose a free font. So I'll clear all and clear all of these. And then I'll go back and start with free and all caps and uncheck classic and go back and see if there's a free font that I like. And Trey Gothic display is one that works for me. So I'll pick that one. So this is the new thing with picking fonts. It's repositionable and you can see the current font and you can see fonts that you've recently chosen. So that if you wanna go back to a font, you don't have to try to remember like in all those 700 and some odd fonts. So that is what's new with fonts. Hopefully you find some or all of this information useful. If you have questions, leave me a comment. If you have comments, leave me a comment. If you need help, leave me a comment. And thank you so very much for watching.